We know when we die, we'll breathe our last sigh for our sunny California. The following program is produced by the AM First Radio Network and distributed by Global American Broadcasting, the GAB Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in for this edition of Justice Watch with Attorney Zulu Ali. I am Attorney Zulu Ali with the Justice Watch crew, Rosa Nunez, Michael Bilal Clark, Dr. Kiel Bashir, and Andrea Rodeman. This week, like every week, we'll be discussing critical legal and social justice issues that are impacting our community. This week, we will be, our subject matter actually, is how to cope. Uh, suicide, depression, social media, and injustice. So last week, we kind of ended off uh, talking a little bit about social uh, media, and also we, we did speak a little bit about the issue of, of suicide and uh, um, uh, other issues, uh, especially mental trauma issues. And I think it's one of those topics that we, we treat it when it comes to our discussion um, in, in these formats and these forums the same way we actually treat them in reality is very seldom are these issues actually addressed. It's actually an issue that in our criminal justice system and our just, justice system in general that we, we deal with this issue on a daily basis. And, and I see it firsthand where, you know, you have, you know, mental trauma is, um, you know, one of those issues that's really taboo to speak about. I mean, I think that earlier we probably had just as many mental and uh, uh, psychosis and trauma, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, hundreds of years ago. However, we really didn't really address it because it's a taboo subject. Mm -hmm. I think that we have as traditionally when it comes to mental issues as men, you know, those are things that, you know, that's a sign of weakness mm -hmm. uh, and also a sign of, you know, something is, is, is wrong with you if you have some sort of mental issue or, or some sort of trauma or, you know, it, it's, it's, it's some, one of those things that we really don't like to talk about. I think that the people who are suffering from mental depression, people who are suffering from suicidal uh, thoughts, are much higher than they are actually revealed in real time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just something that we, you know, everybody puts on the face, and it's one of those things that we typically don't talk about in our society. And and to be quite honest with you, in in really any society, and you know that's that's it, you know it is it is what it is. Uh, identifying with it, I think on a daily basis, I think that we live in. Uh, in a time where people, you know, have a very difficult time of, of coping. That's the reason why motivational videos and things to motivational talk and all those things are very prevalent because, you know, people, you know, have a hard time with dealing with the daily grind that, that we deal with. I mean, it's difficult and we, you know, most people put on a face and they don't really address really what's, what's going on with them and oftentimes it's 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 too late but it also causes other problems other diseases other you know there's some physical repercussions of mental disorders as well i know this is you know we try to keep it within the justice realm when we talk about almost any of our topics and you know and so uh, i think for me and, and 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 i'm not a psychologist or mental health expert but I do deal with people on a daily basis within the system who are dealing with with these issues and you know and I know that doing assessments and I know doing you know referring individuals to mental health counseling and referring individ individuals to different things as far as their mental issues are concerned that um, you know they say that, and we looked at the numbers, and let's just think about this. So f from the ages of 15, according to, you know, the, um, um, and our source would be the, um, the Department of, of Justice, I believe, is where I got this most recent statistic. Um, it says that 
15 to 24, in the ages of 15 to 24, this is for African Americans, that basically it was a second, suicide was the second leading cause of death. Mm. Right? And for, and it's up 47% for, and this is around 2019, the statistic that I'm looking at. And then the 60% when it comes to black females who have actually, and within that age group, uh, and it has surpassed that of white females as far as suicide rates for black females. Is that from outside? Mm -hmm. And so also I'm looking at the uh, Bureau of Justice Statistics. It says that 56% of state prisoners, and 56% uh, of state prisoners and 64% of jail inmates have had a mental health issue, right? And so what's interesting about when we think about mental health and we also we tend to think about it from the what causes an individual to commit certain criminal acts, right? So in other words, what is it that caused the perpetrator or is there some sort of mental issue of, that caused the perpetrator? Were they suffering from some sort of you know, mood at, or anxiety disorder or some sort, so, some sort of psychosis. But what's interesting is that we often forget that many perpetrators were victims of crime, mm. right? And so, you know, and I think that that's, that's the problem that, that we, we often, like, for example, you know, when people are committing violence or, for example, you know, Many people who per 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 perpetrate domestic violence actually had actually been victims of some sort of violence themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are come from a household where there's domestic violence, you're more likely to perpetrate that mm -hmm. because you've dealt with it. Or children who actually who are exposed to certain types of violence are more likely to commit violence. You know, I mean, I think there are statistics that would support that. Um, and so the question is going to be, you know, how do we deal with it? And, and, and I'm going to say right off of the top, instead of going, you know, going to the bottom of the, of the hour or at the end of the hour and saying that basically we need to recognize it more. And when I say recognize it, recognize the fact that we should, you know, pay more attention and, and, and be a little bit more, um, um, knowledgeable and address these issues a lot more than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. But I think that one of the things that we have to do is we ultimately are going to have to learn as a society, you know, how do you cope with that? If you are, if you are suffering, and, I, and I'm just, and let's talk about depression for a minute. Mm. Um, I mean, how do you, you know, we need to, how, and, and one of the subject is coping. How do you cope? Because obviously the show can be an entire show of identifying depression and suicide mm -hmm. and statistics and how it impacts the criminal justice system. But the bigger issue is how do we teach people or how do we help people cope with their depression? How do we help people to cope with thoughts of suicide? How do we help people deal, you know, with this type of trauma. Um, and, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, in my job that I deal with people on a daily basis that are at the very lowest of low of what they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. I mean, in other words, whether it's a family issue or whether there's, you know, there's a criminal issue that they're dealing with. I mean, I, I you know, when they speak to me, they don't necessarily speak to me about what's going on within, you know, whatever's happening legally. Mm -hmm. They talk about what's really happening and what they're going with and the depression and, and, and you know, it's 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 an extremely difficult time for people. Uh, and so I get an opportunity to te to talk with people and, and much of what I try to do when I'm speaking with people who are dealing with these things and I, I figure out ways to you know, what is a coping mechanism? I know a lot of people go to psychologists and psychiatrists, which I'm not, to deal with that. But I think that a lot of what you're dealing with, when you listen to people like Les Brown, yeah. 
when you listen to people like many of these other people who are motivational speakers, they are, in essence, you if you really look at what they're really talking about, they're really talking about um, how to overcome the crisis and the problems that you deal with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, and that's, and that's, I mean, you know, in life, ultimately there's always going to be problems and setbacks. Right. I mean, everybody, and that's the reason why, um, you know, religion and faith is such a big issue for many people. And oftentimes that's where people find their peace. You know, they find their peace in their religion and they find their peace in faith. Mm -hmm. Anxiety disorder is always a, is a huge issue. It's one of the number one issues is, is the anxiety that people feel on a daily basis about the constant unknown. There are so many things that go bad in people's life that they can hardly even deal with the day by day and, and be positive because so many bad things yeah. happen to them in their life. Yep. So it's hard for them to maintain that faith. It's like, what's next? This has gone wrong for me. Then, you know, that's the anxiety. So you almost anticipate bad things happening to you mm -hmm. because bad things constantly always go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. What can go wrong will go wrong, and people deal with that on a really daily basis. Yeah. And so, you know, then the question is, how do you cope? How do you deal with this anxiety? So much so that some people feel like, that they cannot even get up. And I've heard people say, I can't even get up in the morning. I don't even want to see tomorrow because today is so bad. How do I just deal with it? I'm just so sick and tired yeah. of so many bad things happening that I just don't even want to see tomorrow. I want, I'm, I'm, I'm through with this. You know what I mean? If I don't wake up tomorrow, I really don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. But at any rate, we'll continue with this discussion on the other side of the break. Please do not touch that down. Do you have a great idea for a radio show but have no idea where to start? Or have you been hosting a podcast for a while and want to take it to the next level? If so, you need the Gab Radio Network. To host a show on the Gab Radio Network, all you need is your voice, and we'll handle the rest. From technical engineering to full-service audio production and much more. Every show on the Gab Radio Network can be heard on our station on the TuneIn Radio app. Plus, we put all of our shows on our satellite, which is accessed by over 5,500 stations. And here's the best part. You can host from anywhere you want. There are many means to connect to the Gab Radio Network remotely, and our staff of highly trained engineers and producers will make you sound like you're right here in studio. So, if you want to be on the Gab Radio Network, the same network that hosts the Small Business Advocate, Radio MD, and The Federalist, send an email right now to sales at gabradionetwork.com. That's sales at gabradionetwork.com. Nubian Pictures presents a CCM Films production documentary entitled Purpose and Freedom, Keep Your Hand on the Plow. This emotional and strong documentary tells the story of African-American lawyer Zulu Ali seeking justice and his purpose as a lawyer while crossing paths with Araceli, an undocumented immigrant from Mexico who is seeking her freedom. Together, they help discover their purpose and freedom in each other. Watch this incredible film today from iTunes Movies, YouTube Movies, Amazon Prime, and Google Play Movies. Learn about the cast and crew, links to purchase, and more at PurposeAndFreedomMovie.com. Purpose and Freedom. Keep your hand on the plow. Available now. Rated G. I did not feel safe. That's why I decided to come to California, because I didn't feel safe in Mexico. It's kind of like the system, and if you go outside the system, then it becomes a struggle. Are you an immigrant seeking defense representation and are looking to protect your rights? Or maybe someone who is experiencing an injustice or discrimination and need a lawyer you can trust? Well, that's exactly why you need the help of award-winning trial lawyer, Zulu Ali. 
The law offices of Zulu Ali provides immigration defense representation for those seeking justice and looking to protect their rights. If you or a loved one needs professional legal advice and representation, then contact Zulu Ali. Zulu Ali's firm focuses on criminal law, family law, civil and personal injury, and international law. Zulu Ali is a former police officer and U.S. Marine, so you know you're in good hands. Serving all of California and immigration cases nationwide, representing victims and suspects at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. Call Zulu Ali today at 888-682-3049 or visit ZuluAliLaw.com. Welcome back to Justice Watch with Attorney Zulu Ali and the Justice Watch crew, where we're continuing with our discussion, um, where we're talking about how to cope, uh, suicide, depression, social media, and injustice. And before I went to the break, I was kind of setting the stage for uh, what our our focus is going to be with regards to uh, this topic, and that is going to be how do we cope because I don't want it to be an hour of us just discussing about, you know, suicide, depression, social, how all that plays into injustice, because, you know, we know that there's, mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's not really much that we can get out of that. Cause I don't think, I don't think that's something that I have to necessarily sell to a lot of people and to the extent that it's going to change something. I'm not quite sure, but what I do want to do is I just want to address the issue about how do we, you know, cope with, you know, the the daily grind that people go mm -hmm. through and where depression, you know, really, you know, comes from. I mean, it's, it's a huge issue. That's the reason why and I, I talked about Les Brown. And there's mm -hmm. many, many others who do motivational speeches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, what's the what's the brother that does it all the time? E.T. Eric, e e Eric Thomas. Yeah, Eric Thomas. And, you know, they're they're very much sought after you know, they you know, you watch their, their, you know, the videos mm -hmm. that they have. I mean, it's a, it's a very, um, uh, a big industry. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not the motivation is not, at least from my perspective, it's, it's, it's not necessarily cause you hear the talk, the way that they address it. And they all begin with the same issue about where they were in their lives mm -hmm. and how what they went with. How do you go through the daily struggle and a daily grind? And if you look, you listen to most of them, they're going to give you a scenario where it makes you understand that that is where everybody is. Everybody has been in that space where, you know, life becomes challenging no matter where you are in your life. You know, there are people at every level who, I mean, we see it, we, you know, uh, for example, when they talk about billionaires that try to commit suicide or millionaires that try to commit suicide, and we see the depression and struggle that people have regardless of their, their um, situation, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're, they're depressed because it's a daily struggle. If it's not, as they used to always say, if it ain't one thing, it's another, it's another yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it's always something that's going, and and that's a hard thing to do. Just getting through, you know. And and then we listen about, um, you know, these, uh, uh, like I know that when I was, you know, and we talked about religion, and then we talked about faith, mm -hmm. and the reason why faith is such a, uh, you know, people gravitate to it because in many ways. There is it. It would be difficult for me to be able to give anybody any advice about the anxiety that people, as human beings, experience on a daily basis. If mm -hmm. I didn't address the issue of faith, yeah, because I mean, because um, there is no guarantees, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you if you don't if you if everything is going right for you in your mind, and if you think that everything is not, nothing will go wrong, then I think you become reckless, mm -hmm. right? But if you also are paralyzed by your daily activity because of what you think will go wrong, then you also can create destruction, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, you know, and, and again, this is not a religious show. Right. And there's no I'm not advocating for any type of religion or anything like that. 
but how are you going to be able to deal with the daily grind of all, like, for example, you know, we saw it, like, for example, nobody was expecting the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The issue of suicide went up during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The people were having financial issues during the pandemic. Yeah. There were issues with family issues, such as, you know, uh, marriages, yeah. issues going through through the pandemic. Um, so, you know, we saw all of that. And these are things that people didn't expect. Yeah. Right. And when you hit that situation, uh, like in 2019 is where you start seeing this increase, which bled over to 2020. Mm -hmm. There was an increase in depression. There was yeah. an increase in suicide. There was an increase in all of these things yeah. that we were, you know, that we experienced, that we were experiencing. Um, and so the question, and it goes back. So again, everybody deals with some level of that struggle, mm -hmm. right? Nobody is, is, uh, exempt is exempt from it. Yeah. We don't want to think that we want to put on the face like we do on social media that nothing like, look at me, look what I have, mm -hmm. you know, look at where I'm at, look at what I'm eating, look at where I'm going. Because it is in many ways, it actually plays into trying to deal with your depression. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're able to have a certain, it makes you have a certain type of life if you're able to let people see that things are, are going yeah. a certain way. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, it, 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 it helps people and people live on that yeah, and people live there. Yeah. And it helps their. Sometimes it helps the it, it helps their depression, I guess, or it makes it worse. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but the reality of it is, is that, um, you know, it. You know, we we life is life is is that process. Mm -hmm. It's it's that you know, there has to be, you know. There's I mean, when I sit there and I think about some of my, like you sit there and you look and I'm thinking about one entertainer in general. And, you know, very, very successful. Um, but I know when I say successful, I'm talking about financial and, and whatever. And then you look and see what happens in their life when it comes to their family. You can't control nobody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the reality of it is, is no matter how great, you know, you may be, there's always this thing that's going to come up that's going to hit people. And, you know, and that's where the depression comes from. Yeah. And, 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 and how do we cope with that every, every day? And my advice to people, and the one thing that I can only tell people is, you know, is the, is the faith as, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and if you don't, you know, you have to, you know, because I know it's difficult for people, and I find it because I know there's so many people so negative. Yeah. And everybody I deal with in, in, in my business, it's like this, you know, like they're waiting for something <laughs> to happen yeah. and they're thinking the worst and they're, they're impatient and don't want to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And all I can do is just I tell them, you know, hey, man, you know, you're going to have to have some degree of faith. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's, it, it's a trip because as a man, like you said at the beginning, is that we don't want to look at depression because we figure it's a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. And see, for a long time, you know, I knew that something existed, mm -hmm. you know, but I, you know, I backed away from it. No, you know, I'm, a, you know, I can handle this. You know, I'm not going to never fold up under this pressure mm -hmm. of, of life. You know, I got this, I got this. And I told myself that for many years, mm -hmm. but ultimately I one day came to find out that depression is real. In fact, I even got on social media and I blasted on social media and said, depression is real. Mm -hmm. It's because that was the day that it was my awakening mm -hmm. to understand my own shortcomings and my mm -hmm. own, like, I, I sat back and I'm like, man, I'm going through this terrible time, man. But how do I deal with it? And right. that was a, you know, and, and you know, I can go back to a time where I was driving down the freeway and I was going to sleep, and I was throwing water on my face to stay woke, mm -hmm. just to keep me woke. Well, depression was like that to me when I was going through those 
those periods and times mm. where I thought, man, I was going to fall short, I would turn on that ET early in the morning. I mm. mean, I would literally work, wake up to motivational speaking every morning. Mm. I would blast it around the house while the kids was going to school, mm. and I would listen to this dude, and this dude would pump me up and get me going and get me going, and I'd go out and I'd make these little business transactions, but that's what kept me going. Mm. But the thing about it was for many years, I ignored it because I didn't recognize it. Right. And I think a lot of it ignored because we, and, and there's a way of coping with it, yeah. but you just have to find that way of coping with it. Like you say, it could be faith. Mm -hmm. It can be just the person that's motivating you. It mm -hmm. could be somebody in your life. I look at my kids sometimes and I like, man, I got to get through for them. Right. You know? So. That, that, that's true, man. And, and what's interesting is that, you know, it's not an anomaly. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's life. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? But at any rate, please do not touch that dial. We'll be back with uh, with more on Justice Watch. There's a new nationally syndicated radio program that's sweeping the nation, and you don't want to miss it. Justice Watch with attorney Zulu Ali, the voice of justice for the people. The focus of Justice Watch is to provide an honest analysis and viable solutions to the criminal and social justice crisis in America and the world from a black, brown, working class, and socially disadvantaged perspective, and to motivate listeners to be informed and part of the solution. Zulu Ali is joined by the Justice Crew, consisting of Rosa Nunez, Michael Clark, Dr. Akil Bashir, and Charito Ali to tackle the most pressing issues. Host attorney Zulu Ali is a former police officer, U.S. Marine Corps veteran, and an award-winning trial lawyer who focuses on representing persons accused of crimes, immigrants, victims of discrimination, and persons seeking civil justice. Find out how to listen to Justice Watch with attorney Zulu Ali at justicewatchradio.com. Nubian Pictures presents a CCM Films production documentary entitled Purpose and Freedom. Keep your hand on the plow. This emotional and strong documentary tells the story of African-American lawyer Zulu Ali seeking justice and his purpose as a lawyer while crossing paths with Araceli, an undocumented immigrant from Mexico who is seeking her freedom. Together, they help discover their purpose and freedom in each other. Watch this incredible film today from iTunes Movies, YouTube Movies, Amazon Prime, and Google Play Movies. Learn about the cast and crew, links to purchase, and more at PurposeAndFreedomMovie.com. Purpose and Freedom. Keep your hand on the plow. Available now. Rated G. I did not feel safe. That's why I decided to come to California, because I didn't feel safe in Mexico. It's kind of like the system, and if you go outside the system, then it becomes a struggle. Are you an immigrant seeking defense representation and are looking to protect your rights? Or maybe someone who is experiencing an injustice or discrimination and need a lawyer you can trust? Well, that's exactly why you need the help of award-winning trial lawyer Zulu Ali. The law offices of Zulu Ali provides immigration defense representation for those seeking justice and looking to protect their rights. If you or a loved one needs professional legal advice and representation, then contact Zulu Ali. Zulu Ali's firm focuses on criminal law, family law, civil and personal injury, and international law. Zulu Ali is a former police officer and U.S. Marine, so you know you're in good hands. Serving all of California and immigration cases nationwide, representing victims and suspects, at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. Call Zulu Ali today at 888-682-3049 or visit ZuluAliLaw.com. Welcome back to Justice Watch with Attorney Zulu Ali and the Justice Watch crew. Where we're continuing on our discussion with how to cope, suicide, depression, social media, and injustice. And before we went back to, uh, went to the break actually, we were actually speaking about the the commonality of it. I mean, because everybody that goes through it actually probably feels like they're going through it by themselves. Mm -hmm. But I mean, everybody has those moments. I mean, when you look at the stories of success, I always say success stories always look the same. Yeah, there's always a period of struggle, mm -hmm. right? I mean, even in the most successful, it's like it's the same story. Yeah, and and you see how they come through this you know, this process of just going through, you know, these dire moments. But at some point in time, even though they're going through this dire moment, 
there's this faith and there's this understanding that sometimes that's the process. What makes depression worse for most people is that they feel like they're the only ones that are going through Correct. it. And I know that when I speak, and it's funny because when I speak to people, um, you know, that I'm, you know, that I'm representing that are going through some really terrible times and, you know, can't understand why this is happening to them. You know, I, I try to remind them that, you know, that I just came from somebody that's going through something that's much worse than what you're going yeah. through. You just don't recognize that what you're going through is not as bad as you think it is. Mm. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, um, the, and, and that's the thing. Is it's amazing how bad your situation feels at the moment when you're in when you're uh, when there's so much worse. Yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, because you're thinking, man, this is you know, um, you know, this is so bad. Yeah, you know what I mean? Especially when you sit there and you think about, you know, and you, I know that I have people who are on the inside mm -hmm. that are listening to uh, to us because I know there's people who are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And I know that they listen to our show, and you know, um, so you know, there's 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 a silver lining in everything. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and at that moment, it's amazing. Uh, I talk to people who were incarcerated that I helped, and then they get out of incarceration, right? Mm -hmm. And now, I, I was in court the other day with someone that when I met them, they were in cars, they were in immigration detention. And they had been in, they stayed in immigration detention for two years. Mm -hmm. Now we get them out of immigration detention. And now we're going through this process of where we're trying to, you know, help with their immigration status by getting rid of a conviction that they have. And then they were crying because the process has taken a long time and they're, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, depressed about where we, you know, where she is right now. Mm -hmm. But I reminded her, do you know where you were when I met you? Correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You were getting ready to be sent out of the country to a place you don't even know how to speak Spanish, right? Yeah. And now you, you were getting ready to be deported. And this is all you're dealing with right now. You're depressed and you're crying. You see how we are? Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. And so, you know, and that's kind of the, the situation is that it's so everything can be, you know, and sometimes bad situations are brought to you so that you can understand the, the, the greatness of your current circumstances. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it, it's a trip because my wife told me that one day, I was sitting up there. She knows that when I go through those moments, I get real silent. And she simply walked up to me. She says, but have you ever realized that we ain't never been without? Mm -hmm. Right. It was just those words. Mm -hmm. We ain't never been without. Right. You know, we can cry all we want. We can stress about financial uh, matters and stuff like that. But she said, we ain't never been without. Mm -hmm. And that was just enough to, you know, push me on. Right. You know? Yeah. And that's another thing about so. Uh, that's another thing about social media. Now I'll, I'll let I'm going to go to you guys, and but that's the thing about social media is that, in, unless there was someone looking at you, really, really, would it really be that bad? Because mm. the majority of what we do, are we look for somebody else's approval, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Why would you have? I mean, for example, for example, what if I had a? What if you got a Rolls Royce? And something happened, and it looked like you were getting to getting, and you were living somewhere really nice in Calabasas. Mm -hmm. And something was getting ready to <laughs> happen to you, and you was getting ready to lose that Rolls Royce and that house in Calabasas, right? Mm -hmm. Who, what really, what would really be the impact of you losing that? The real impact mm. would be it wouldn't be you. Yeah. It would be people's perception of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, what, what, you know, what, what's the difference between living in a studio and living in a mansion? Yeah. Correct. Right. The only difference is what people see. Exactly. Right. Yeah. If nobody sees your mansion, right. Mm -hmm. Does it matter whether you live in a mansion or a studio? 
You see what I'm saying? I mean, you know, we have to be real. I mean, a lot of what we do is is for the way it looks. We most of what we have, we don't even need. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I mean, and 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 sometimes we just, you know, the reason why we have so much is primarily to to floss. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know. Except when you ride in first class, because it's really nice up there. But at any rate, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. No, it is nice up there. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what say you? Who wants to go next? Uh, I, I, what I was going to say was uh, when, when, when you were talking about how what your wife told you. Sometimes it does just take a change of perspective. One thing that one thing that I can share from my from my youth when I was going through my bout with depression and it got really bad. And when we're talking about coping, um, we probably should say positive ways to cope because sometimes people use negative things to cope like they want to, you know, drink and smoke and, mm. you know, promiscuity, all kind of craziness and stuff. And, you know, I, I used to write, do my music, do poetry, draw, you know, things that were creative. And then once, but, but I was pushing, still pushing myself to the back, you know. Mm. And one day, the writing stopped helping, the poetry stopped helping, the, all the things that I was doing to, create, to be creative to kind of keep my mind preoccupied from addressing the issue, it, it wasn't working anymore. Mm. And it's really important that people understand the seriousness of depression. And, and talking to people, saying, hey, I'm going through this. Even until you can find a therapist, hey, you know, someone that you trust, you, you, you can't be silent because depression is a silent killer. Mm. People are, are going through so much stuff internally, and you, you don't know a lot of times unless somebody says something about it. And that's, that's huge. You have to do it. And one thing, one thing I will also say is practicing gratitude. It took a long time because at one point I was like, everything's bad. Everything's bad. There's nothing. I'm not grateful for nothing. I don't. And then I started with like the small things. Like one day, I, I and when I say small things, I was thanking God for the Martin show because it made me laugh. Like that's what I started at, at those little small things. And then thank you for the air I can breathe. Like you, you have to learn to be grateful in those small things and it'll change your perspective. We all go through trouble. We all do. It's just about how how we process it, how we view it. Mm -hmm. And that makes all the bit of difference. But I will say talking to somebody is so important. It's so important because that mental torment can really mess you up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends on who you talk to. You make sure you it, talk it, to it, the right person. Because yeah, when you say right. that sometimes it's negative because sometimes you can talk to somebody that's going to take you to the wrong place, whether it's yeah, through, lower place. yeah, sometimes yeah. through drug, drugs, and sometimes through, and that was that's another thing that is that as human beings, sometimes you know, it's you know, where we feel like that people sometimes, and and I've heard people say this, they say sometimes I think this person wants to see you struggle. Oh, absolutely. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or or absolutely. they don't want you to see yeah. doing better than they're doing. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then basically when, you know, some people, you know, kind of, you know, wallow mm -hmm. in your, you know, problems. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes that's why we try to keep that face because we don't want someone else because that's how we do. That's why we don't, you know, it's like, you know, um, the Joneses, you know, how we used to mm -hmm. always call the Joneses. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want the Joneses to know that, you know, uh, we ain't doing right over here. Correct. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. we kind of don't want people to say that. You know what I mean? But the reality, of course, is that, you know, um, your faith has to be in the right place. Mm -hmm. And right. for everybody, that's different. But faith is, is really important. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you have, I think in order to be, to be able to grind these things out, is ultimately you have to be comfortable doing it alone mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah. And the reason why I say that's why faith is, helps me so much is because, you know, depending on what faith you have, 
if you know because when you have faith in someone else then sometimes they can cause you depression mm. you see what i'm saying yeah. like if your entire life yep. is in this one that's where most of it starts mm -hmm. like i had all this faith in this one person this was my rider yep and when that rider does something to you then it matter it goes right into mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying yeah oh yeah but that's oh, yeah. where that faith issue comes in is those moments, you know, I don't know whether it's, uh, what's that that Russell Simmons does? What is it? You know, what does Russell Simmons do? You know what I'm oh, talking the about? Yoga. The, yoga. Yeah, yeah, whatever yoga. you got to do, yeah. you got to figure out yoga. that mechanism, prayer, whatever it is, where you can have that moment and yeah. you can, you Peace. know, yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Within. Yeah. That's the difference between uh, right. religion okay. and uh spirituality yeah all right we'll we'll be back on the other side of break with justice watch there's a new nationally syndicated radio program that's sweeping the nation and you don't want to miss it justice watch with attorney zulu ali the voice of justice for the people the focus of justice watch is to provide an honest analysis and viable solutions to the criminal and social justice crisis in america and the world from a black brown working class and socially disadvantaged perspective and to motivate listeners to be informed and part of the solution zulu ali is joined by the justice crew consisting of rosa nunez michael clark dr akil bashir and charito ali to tackle the most pressing issues Host Attorney Zulu Ali is a former police officer, U.S. Marine Corps veteran, and an award-winning trial lawyer who focuses on representing persons accused of crimes, immigrants, victims of discrimination, and persons seeking civil justice. Find out how to listen to Justice Watch with Attorney Zulu Ali at justicewatchradio.com. Nubian Pictures presents a CCM Films production documentary entitled Purpose and Freedom. Keep your hand on the plow. This emotional and strong documentary tells the story of African-American lawyer Zulu Ali seeking justice and his purpose as a lawyer while crossing paths with Araceli, an undocumented immigrant from Mexico who is seeking her freedom. Together, they help discover their purpose and freedom in each other. Watch this incredible film today from iTunes Movies, YouTube Movies, Amazon Prime, and Google Play Movies. Learn about the cast and crew, links to purchase, and more at PurposeAndFreedomMovie.com. Purpose and Freedom. Keep your hand on the plow. Available now. Rated G. I did not feel safe. That's why I decided to come to California, because I didn't feel safe in Mexico. It's kind of like the system, and if you go outside the system, then it becomes a struggle. Are you an immigrant seeking defense representation and are looking to protect your rights? Or maybe someone who is experiencing an injustice or discrimination and need a lawyer you can trust? Well, that's exactly why you need the help of award-winning trial lawyer Zulu Ali. The law offices of Zulu Ali provides immigration defense representation for those seeking justice and looking to protect their rights. If you or a loved one needs professional legal advice and representation, then contact Zulu Ali. Zulu Ali's firm focuses on criminal law, family law, civil and personal injury, and international law. Zulu Ali is a former police officer and U.S. Marine, so you know you're in good hands. Serving all of California and immigration cases nationwide, representing victims and suspects, at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. Call Zulu Ali today at 888-682-3049 or visit ZuluAliLaw.com. Welcome back to Justice Watch with Attorney Zulu Ali and the Justice Watch crew where we're continuing with our discussion on how to cope, suicide, depression, social media, and injustice. So, uh... We're going to go to Rosa next. What say you, Rosa? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, awesome. No, I can't, I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Rosa. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? No, I can't no. hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. better. Better. Yeah. Oh, my God. Sadly, I would say, sadly, we live in a culture that really condemns failure, and being depressed or being mentally ill is something that is seen as a failure, and I think that I, for myself, I have become really comfortable with failure, 
sadly, we live in a society that doesn't and is not comfortable with failure. Failure is condemned. And I think that's something that in order to be able to get through these tough times is realizing everyone fails and this failure of mine, I'm comfortable with it because I'm going to learn something as opposed to seeing it as something that defines you as an individual and truly kind of makes you seem like you are a person who is not successful. It, you know, a lot of the people that make it out there are successful because they were comfortable with failing. They became so comfortable with failing that they learned so much that they're able to succeed. Mm. So that's my opinion in terms of dealing with tough times. We all have them, but it's really becoming comfortable with that aspect of life and knowing that everyone goes through it, but not everyone is strong enough to put themselves out there and let everybody know, hey, I'm dealing with this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the whole thing about you do have to treat your success, the successes like uh, like your failures. You yeah. keep treat them treat them the same and that's why we go back to the whole when we listen to motivational speech yeah i mean and so i think that's the reason why it's so popular that's the reason why we know that it's so common and people why would so many people why would these people be so successful that are able to motivate people mm -hmm. and when they talk about that that's what they talk the whole point of motivation is overcome and failure yeah that's the majority of the time when you're listening to a motivational speech. That is the con that is pretty much the context of it. Is is dealing with the fact that as human beings, you know, it all it's always gonna and, and the reality of it is we always look at the next person and assume that that person is doing. Why are they getting this? Yeah. And I'm and I'm getting that. Correct. And 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 you just and sometimes you just don't know what's happening you know, in that person's life. Mm -hmm. It just, you just think that that person is, you know, uh, doing great. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So true. You know, and, and, I, and I've ran into that before where people say, man, I'm a good hearted person, man. I'm a religious person. I do all of this and I do it. And this joke over here got all this crap going on. Why are they so successful and I'm not? Right. And I've heard that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it brings me to a point where I remember once someone once said, well, you know, when you reach those points, you have to go to a therapist. You have to, mm. you know, go to somebody that can talk to you. And I've always been against that. Now, I mean, everybody has things that they do. Okay. But I've always been against it because every time I see a therapist, it's always somebody sitting you in a chair and talking to you like, how do we do this or how do we do that? You know, and that was depressing within itself for me. <laughs> I want somebody that's going to ignite my soul, right. you know, with this motivational speaker and yell right. at me and, 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 and tell me, OK, you, you got to get up off your butt. Let's go. You, you need to go. That's the type of stuff that yeah. I want. I don't want nobody sitting there saying, well, OK, you got to do it this way. And I was always against that. Now, like I say, it's different things work for different people. And I think with, when it comes to depression, you have to find what brings you the most joy. You have to find something that brings you out of that hole, out of that dark hole, and push you back out or thrust you back out into life to do better. And every day that I see my kids, that's what thrusts me now. Yeah. That's right. Well, I mean, and one of the things is that I think that what happens is that we have to address the commonality of depression. Like when they give these numbers, like they say a certain percentage is this or a certain percentage mm -hmm. of that. I think that, you know, and, and how things are defined, mm -hmm. because I think that basically uh, if you if you if you make it a common issue, then I think coping with it is a lot different because you can take someone who is going through something. You can medicate them. Yeah. You can, you know, have them going to certain, you know, like you said, therapy and you know, uh, and making someone think that something is wrong with them. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is, is that if you are depressed, there's nothing wrong with you. Right. Yeah. You see, that's yeah. the whole Correct. point. There's nothing. And that's why, you know, we feel, I mean, and, and I think that's really the thing is that we have to understand that, that going through, you know, daily, I mean, daily struggles is, you know, life part of life. Yeah. I mean, I, I called home the last two weeks to speak to someone back at home and it's like, man, I'm going to another funeral, you mm -hmm. know, so-and-so died or so-and-so died or this person is died. I mean, you know, that is the part of life is that there are going to be things that aren't going to go your way. Yeah. And, and just dealing with human beings, you know what I mean? That's the thing that, that, that's the hardest, one of the hardest parts of life is just dealing with people. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just that people are so miserable 
that they go out of their way to make you miserable. Mm-hmm. Like everybody wants to take, I feel like that some way. Maybe, and that, that, that's my psychosis. Yeah. I feel like sometimes it's like if someone tells me a, a, some bad stuff, I'm, I'm, I go, I like in, certain energy. Mm-hmm. So when I'm around someone, I like people who take the energy and, and use it as a way to, you know, like this has happened, but this is how we're going to fix it. Yeah. But some people like everything that happens. It's like they're always trying to give you bad news. Yeah. It's like they, they waddle in your mm. your misery. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I heard this about what you call it. You know, like, hey, so and so, so and so got married. Yeah, but I heard he this doing this. So I heard he doing <laughs> it's like really? You know what I'm saying? It's like everything that happens is always something negative yeah. that goes along with it. Mm-hmm. And everybody is like, you know, trying to uphold this you know this image Mm -hmm. but i mean i i just think that man you know i think energy is a lot i feed off of people's energy and sometimes i've learned from from my one of my downfalls is that you know sometimes you need to kick bad energy away yeah you have to let go of it you know i mean you got to say you know what i just don't want to deal with that or when you when you when you have that that project Right. Mm. And you come to, you know, the person with the project like, hey, man, I'm getting ready to do X, Y and Z. Or I heard, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this. And then when you ever heard this one, you doing too much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Uh, oh, my God. Um, yes, I, yeah. I just heard. Oh, my God. I mean, I, <laughs> I I'm like, I'm doing too much. <laughs> Right. You know, and then now all of a sudden you're worried about my health because I'm trying to do something instead of you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it, and it, and it makes you bad because you bring something to somebody that you think believes in you. Correct. And right. then they shoot, they down, shoot, they shoot down what you're yeah. trying to do. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and that that bothers me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so sometimes you know they always say don't tell uh your your big dreams to small minded people. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Because they're gonna always say, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, when I went to move out here to California from Tennessee and I said, I'm gonna bring me, my mother, my wife and my four Mm -hmm. kids to go to law school. What? You can't do that. How are you gonna do that? You know what I'm saying? How (laughs) you gonna do that? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know, and so it it, it met, and it, so it it demotivates you, mm-hmm. as opposed to saying, "Hey, man, you know what? I had a friend of mine says, man, you know what? You if I could pay for you to do that, I'd uh, I'd pay for it because you're gonna be a great lawyer. Mm-hmm. I'm for I do whatever I can. Let me know, yeah. right? Those are the kind. That's the energy right. that you have you to deal that. with, and sometimes you have to you have to surround yourself with you know that kind of energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but see, a lot of times it'd be... Syndicated radio program that's sweeping the nation, and you don't want to miss it. Justice Watch with attorney Zulu Ali, the voice of justice for the people. The focus of Justice Watch is to provide an honest analysis and viable solutions to the criminal and social justice crisis in America and the world from a black, brown, working class, and socially disadvantaged perspective, and to motivate listeners to be informed and part of the solution. Zulu Ali is joined by the Justice Crew, consisting of Rosa Nunez, Michael Clark, Dr. Akil Bashir, and Charito Ali to tackle the most pressing issues. Host attorney Zulu Ali is a former police officer, U.S. Marine Corps veteran, and an award-winning trial lawyer who focuses on representing persons accused of crimes, immigrants, victims of discrimination, and persons seeking civil justice. Find out how to listen to Justice Watch with attorney Zulu Ali at justicewatchradio.com. KCAA Radio, Loma Linda, where no listener is ever left behind.